Meditation is supposed to work. It's supposed to make a difference. That's why we do it. So why is it that you sometimes hear that there is no such thing as good meditation or bad meditation? Part of the reason is that when you start out meditating, you're not a good judge of what's good and what's bad. This is a problem with meditators everywhere. If you're not familiar with the territory of the mind, you can't tell what's a step forward and what's a step back. And if you're tied up in the problems of conceit, it makes it even more difficult. If what looks like a step forward is happening, you can get puffed up and proud and get complacent. If what looks like a step back happens, you get depressed. Either that or you go into denial, which is why at the very beginning they tell you not to pass judgment on your meditation. Just do it. This is especially true when you go to a place where everybody who walks in the door is taught meditation right away. They can't assume that you have the maturity or the experience needed to, to judge your meditation. But ideally, you should be developing the qualities as you meditate that will eventually put you in a position where you can pass judgment in a skillful way. And it should be the purpose of the, medita the meditation teacher to put you in a position where you don't need the meditation teacher anymore. The other day I was talking to a friend who made the comment that it takes people 20, 30 years to be able to judge their own meditation. That struck me as scary, because after 20 years you can't tell when you're making progress or not. There's got to be something wrong with the meditation. So in the beginning it's good, as I said, to sit with whatever comes up, because that's part of the attitude that will develop the skills you need to be a meditator, patience. You're able to sit with whatever happens. Whether it looks good or looks bad, you can sit with it. You can watch it. Again, the purpose is not that you're just going to sit there and say, well, this is as good as it's going to get ever, so I just might as well accept it and be happy with this. That's a very defeatist attitude. You're patient so you can watch and learn. The more patient you are, the more things you'll be able to see, because you can sit with whatever comes up. This is why the Buddha has that meditation on the elements. Make your mind like water, make your mind like wind, make it like fire, make it like earth. These things have no preferences. They're willing to sit with whatever happens or blow over whatever happens, or wash away whatever happens, or burn whatever happens, without making choices as to what's nice and what's not nice. But the purpose here is so that you can see what's going on, because the insight here is not simply that things are inconstant, but there's a pattern, there's a causal pattern going on. And you want to be able to see all the way from cause to effect and from effect back to cause. That requires that your gaze be steady and consistent. It's like having measuring equipment in a scientific experiment. On the one hand, you want the equipment to be set on a solid table, which is set on a solid floor in a solid building on a solid piece of land. Sort of if there's a little squiggle in the, in the stylus. It actually has something to do with the experiment. It is not a result of the tables wobbling or the buildings wobbling. 
and you want the stylus to keep writing continually. You don't want there to be a gap, say, from you know, 1 a.m. until 5 a.m. The experiment is a long-term experiment. You want it to be 24-7. That's the kind of solidity and consistency you want in your mind in order to be able to see what's going on. So that good, bad, and different, you can stay right here. The other quality is honesty. That whatever comes up, you're going to admit that it's come up. You're not going to go into denial, and you're not going to embellish it to make it more than what it really is. And this is the foundation for a really scientific attitude towards the meditation. Sometimes you hear of specific methods as being scientific, that it's all been worked out. They even have the questions and answers on cards. Standard meditation talks, everybody gets put through the same process. Well, it's scientific in the same sense, say, that you know, the assembly line is scientific. But it doesn't mean that the workers on the assembly line are going to be scientific, or they understand anything of what's going on. It gets more and more mechanical. And that's not the science that the Buddha was teaching. He was teaching you how to experiment, how to take joy in finding things out, which means sometimes you do what you're told in the meditation and sometimes you do what you're not told. So you can see what happens. Once you've got those qualities of honesty and patience under your belt, then you can start playing around. Kurt Vonnegut once made a comment that scientists basically are little kids. Little kids like to play. Scientists like to play. They get grants and everything to play. And of course, their playing hopefully will have some payoff. They're huge branches of science, though, which have no particularly pragmatic payoff. But it's good to have people experimenting, trying to figure things out, because you never know when something's going to be a really valuable discovery. And so it is with the meditation. When the Buddha taught, he taught techniques that open things up to questions. It wasn't that everything was all certain and mapped out and all you had to do was follow the steps A, B, C, D down the line. It was more he would ask you or make statements that would provoke questions in the mind. How do you breathe in a way that calms the effect of the breath on the body? How are you aware of the whole body when you breathe in and breathe out? And then you can start asking questions of your own. There's a pain in your legs. How do you breathe? So as to minimize the pain, or at least to put you in a position where you're not feeling threatened by the pain. I often found in my own practice that a, a particular blockage in the body suddenly made the meditation really interesting. I remember I had a problem in my foot one time very early on. I spent hours breathing in different ways, to see how it affected the pain in the foot. And I learned a lot more from that pain than I did from a lot of books on Dharma. So this is the Buddha's approach to meditation. To Make sure you had the right personal qualities, that you could be trusted to conduct experiments and be more or less objective about the results, and then to set you loose. And sometimes, as with some scientific experiments, you follow a line of inquiry and it leads up nowhere. 
Well, you've learned something. You've learned that this that particular line of inquiry goes nowhere. And then you follow others, and then you follow others, and you, then you find something that really does open things up in the mind. So this is where having a sense of good and bad meditation does finally become useful. In one sense, every meditation is good if you've got the right attitude toward it, i.e., this is an opportunity to learn. Bad is bad only in the sense that a particular line of reasoning doesn't go where you want it, or a particular approach doesn't really give you any real knowledge. When you start getting sloppy, when you start assuming things that you shouldn't assume, feeling certain about things that are still uncertain. In other words, making the same kind of mistakes that a bad scientist might make. That's bad meditation. And sometimes you can see it. And there are cases where, you know, fairly well into the meditation, you still need to talk things over with the teacher. But you want to get so that you can pass judgment on things in a judicious way. Uh, you're not judgmental anymore, but you use your powers of judgment wisely, precisely, accurately, with real wisdom. In other words, you're responsible for your meditation. And if you accept that attitude of responsibility, you become a lot more mature, a lot more careful. You don't just blindly try to hope that the method is going to carry you through. You hope that the method will carry you through if you're alert and watchful, and in judicious in the way you apply the method. That's when the meditation gets good. <laughs>